ஸ்ரீ விஜயேந்திரா ட்ரெயின்ஸ் ஆஃப் வாட்டர் ஸ்ரீ மாத்வ நவமி சிக்னிஃபைஸ் த ஆஸ்பீஷியஸ் டே ஆன் விச் ஸ்ரீ மத்வாச்சாரியா ஹேட் என்டர் த பத்ரிகாஸ்ரமா இந்த கும்பகோணம் ஸ்ரீமத் த செலிப்ரேஷன் ஆஃப் ஸ்ரீ மாத்வ நவமி வாஸ் அ கிராண்ட் அஃபேர் ஸ்ப்ரேட் ஓவர் அ பீரியட் ஆஃப் ஒன் வீக் டியூரிங் த பாண்டிஃபிகேட் ஆஃப் ஸ்ரீ விஜயேந்திரா வித் ஸ்பெஷல் பூஜாஸ் ரிலீஜியஸ் டிஸ்கோர்சஸ் அண்ட் மியூசிக் பர்ஃபார்மன்சஸ் ஆக்குப்பாயிங் த ப்ரைட் ஆஃப் பிளேஸ் in the activities connected with the observance of that memorable event it was one such madhva navami day devotees were thronging at the sri mat right from the early hours of the morning learned pandits were chanting the sumadva vijaya in chorus sri vijayendra after his morning rituals was imparting vedic knowledge to his disciples following that he was to take bath and start the samsthana puja in the sabha mantapa there was an uncontrollable crowd of devotees the sishyas then being busy making preparations for the puja shri vijayendra after some time made his appearance at the puja mantapa to the hailing of the large number of devotees present there the entire assemblage giving him a standing ovation in great veneration the pita dipati then occupied his seat on the puja asana he then placed his hand on a puja casket to take out the idol it contained but became meditative all of a sudden restraining himself from the process of taking out the idol the disciples were stunned by the swami's sudden inaction and reflected why the pontiff who was always brisk was not his normal self at that time everything is ready but why does he seem to be pondering over something thought everyone but surmised that there should be some reason for it though it could not be fathomed then sri vijayendra tried once or twice to commence the puja but became reflective hesitant about starting it he was at the same time watching his belly and massaging it with minutes ticking away a disciple came near the swami and without asking him anything was staring at him suggestive of his perplexity sri vijayendra without telling him anything pointed towards his belly only then it was known that the swami's belly had bloated abnormally and when observed closely it was evident that it was enlarging gradually and within a short time it bulged like a pot to the astonishment and disquiet of those present there the pontiff was incessantly chanting hari nama at that time and when the swami's stomach was swe- swelling rapidly everyone became panicky that something serious may happen they felt what a trial it was on the auspicious occasion of madhva navami sri vijayendra after some time summoned the watchman there the swami asked him how many plantain trees were standing in the garden of the sri mat the watchman in response indicated an approximate number and the swami called him by his side told him something in a whisper the person then left in haste to the garden after a while he was back again with astonishment and in an excited tone he told the swami what all had happened in the garden sri vijayendra then told him to do the same with some more plantain trees this time some disciples accompanied the watchman to the garden the swami seated for puja was stroking his bloated stomach but before long it was seen contracting gradually and the assemblage of devotees could make out that something happening in the garden was responsible for the turn around the strange occurrence prompted man- many to go to the garden and see what was taking place there and to their surprise the devotees who had gone there found many pla- plantain trees dro- chopped off and a watery discharge exuding from the stem left at the bottom of every tree sheared off instantly they ran inside and witnessed the amazement with amazement swami's belly deflating gradually even as water was oozing out of several of those stems in the garden 
Following this, everyone started reflecting. Why has such a thing happened to the Swami? Who has caused this to happen? Somebody must have surely done something harmful. How has the Swami been able to bear all this? How has he nullified the effect of such witchcraft? There was an eager expectation on the part of the devotees that the Swami would say something. But he went for a bath and after returning sat again for doing the puja. The Samstana puja that day took place elaborately. The disciples and pandits still wondering about the bizarre happening that had taken place earlier. Rituals like Hastotaka, Alankara Pakti and uh, Tita Prasada took place as usual. The public still being in the dark about the reason for the queer thing that had occurred during the puja. In the evening, the procession of Sri Madhvacharya's picture in a specially decorated palanquin took place and during that event, devotees were seen talking about the strange happenings that had taken place in the Srimad. In the night, there was a larger than usual gathering of devotees craving to hear the Swami's benedictory message with the avid expectation that he would explain about the extraordinary events of the morning. The Swami, after his routine discourse on dharmic ways of life, started telling about his strange experience during the puja time that day. The entire assemblage listening to him in pin drop silence. A person who could not triumph over me wanted to do something bad to me and had seemed to scheme to hamper the conduct of the Samstana Puja. He approached a sorcerer and sought his assistance to disable me and the latter has suggested that the Puja, uh, puja time would be the best one for that when I would be in seclusion but in full view of a large number of devotees. Later, the person practicing black magic deployed his wizardry and caused accumulation of fluid in my stomach. I realized it when I sat for the puja, but meditating upon Sri Hari, I started chanting the appropriate mantras to drain it away from my system. The sorcerer is here now in your midst to see what I am going to do next, but is trying to slip away from here. Even as the Swami was recounting these, the evil-minded one tried to escape from the mantapa, but was spotted by many who blocked his way and caught him red-handed. Don't harm him. He has done this evil act only at the instigation of another person. He will not repeat such things again, advised the Swami. On hearing which, the wrongdoer fell at the feet of Sri Vijindra and sought to be pardoned. This incident finds mention in the principal writings of On Sri Vijayindra. In the Raghavendra Mahimai publications, we have been covering one or two episodes about Sri Vijayindra in every volume. Readers' request for a complete writing on Sri Vijayindra has now been fulfilled through the Guru, uh, Guru Sarvabhauma publications, in which his numerous deeds find detailed narration in a serialized presentation. Besides, his life story and various incidents connected with him have been analyzed minutely and are being published under the title Sri Vijayendra Vijayam in separate volumes. Devotees have requested more such publications, encompassing also the historical aspects relating to those periods and a presentation of the hidden meanings behind his extraordinary feats under diverse circumstances. Adverting to the instant case, how the severed stem of the plantain trees had exuded the water that had got accumulated in the belly of Sri Vijayendra may beg the question of its truth. If Sri Vijayendra had gone outside and drained off from his body all the fluid collected in his system, it would have given credibility to that occurrence. But why did not the Swami do that? Yes, in that case, there could have been no difference between Sri Vijayendra and the Laiti in public, percep uh, public perception. Indeed, Sri Vijayendra wanted to demonstrate before his devotees that if by witchcraft someone could cause water to collect in his stomach, 
he could by the grace of sri hari and his supreme prowess cause its exudation sitting in his place such accomplishment indeed being bearing ample testimony to his spiritual exaltation in part 4 we have seen how sri vijayendra by his supreme prowess had transferred the shivering caused by a sudden bout of fever that had afflicted him during the puja time to his saffron cloth and that he had again got it back on him after the completion of the puja amongst the 64 act arts or talents jalodhara mahodhara is one and it was in that technique that sri vijayendra had demonstrated his skill in its application which has figured thus far the ex- excessive fluid in sri vijayendra's belly had not been let inside through mouth but by witchcraft in a manner that was not apparent to others sri vijayendra too likewise could have drained it off without others being able to notice it in such an event the bulging of his stomach and its deflation later to its normal state could have been per- perceived by others but none would have known that it was water that was the causative factor that had led to the unnatural occurrence if sri vijayendra had told about the bizarre happening and explained how he had otherwise nullified its ill effect it would not have found whole hearted acceptance by many without giving room for any such doubt the chopping of the plantain trees in the garden that brought out water from their stems and the simultaneous deflation of his swollen belly noticeable by all established beyond dubity the swami's extraordinary spiritual prowess and his mastery over the jalodhara mahodhara ability that conquered the sorcery of the evil minded one like the control sri vijayendra had exercised over the water let into his system some sages as found in puranic versions could contain the entire flow of a river in the kamandala holy vessel carried by them sri raghavendra too was endowed with all the spiritual powers that sri vijayendra had possessed this aspect had been highlighted in the course of narrating the chitter drug incident which may be recalled here some may be led to think in this context whether sri raghavendra could not have prevented mantralaya being affected by the deluge particularly when even his own brindavana had almost submerged in the onrush of the river as already indicated we may now examine another incident concerning water more precisely a vow to be honored before finding answers to various questions relating to the mantralaya flood in fact a reading of the pronouncement of that vow by a physically strong one and his deeds in connection thereto will leave us with the impression that such action could indeed have prevented the deluge in mantralaya too